mentioned about uh, early on about getting the downloads of information like in a dream and um, I love I don't remember where I, if we talked about it or, or if I heard it um, online within an interview but you mentioned about especially with the code and the 10 and 10 intense that can you tell about how that whole process came to you? That is so fascinating. I'm I'm actually from Wisconsin originally and in a town called Menominee and there's areas of energy there from um you know it's it was a Native American community and I when I'm home I run um or walk through these wooded areas, the Red Cedar River, and it's so beautiful and I feel like there is an energy there that I can feel when I'm when I'm doing that, and I was wondering if you could just tell a little bit about your inspiration behind getting the ten um, intense. Well, sure, and I'll, I'll start out in sort of a strange way to answer that question. Um, you know, the Native Americans, since you brought them up, yeah, uh, they. Uh, when they would send their youth out on the vision quests up to the top of the mountain alone and so forth mm -hmm. uh, to have a to have a vision yeah. uh, of to what their calling is or what their purpose is, and um, the the elders of the tribe had been up to the top of the mountain before uh, before that and had prayed and uh, intended and infused rocks with the thoughts that they wanted the young uh, brave or uh, a young person to uh, to feel when they got up to the top of the mountain on their vision quest. In mm -hmm. other words, memories are stored in stone and bone. Mm -hmm. and, and people mm -hmm. don't quite realize that. So when you're taking that walk through those woods mm -hmm. in Wisconsin along the river, mm -hmm. there's, uh, and, and where there have been uh, Native American tribes there in the past, uh, yeah. they, there's been... Uh, thoughts and feelings infused into the uh, the rocks and, uh, around the whole area. That's how it they feels. were praying all the time. Yeah. They were very close, very close to uh, Mother Earth, mm -hmm. Earth Mother, mm -hmm. and and uh, to uh, Great Spirit. So um, when a person gets keyed into that, they start to realize that uh, they start to realize that uh, uh, they can get these downloads and uh, from uh, from the ancients and that's why people go to sacred sites and that's why people go to uh, places where uh, that have been uh, prayed uh, heavily before and that's why they place churches on certain uh, mountaintops and, and hillsides and so forth but, um, and so with my process it's I sort of uh, keep my uh, I don't know myself attuned to knowing that okay when I get uh, when I start feeling like I'm getting inspiration or getting a download or or if I'm in one of those areas uh, uh, where someone has been before me and infused the rocks and the, the whole land with uh, uh, certain ideas and certain feelings and so forth like I I uh, do my best to tap into that and that's what I was doing when I got mm. the code mm. I was walking along the beach. Mm. And, uh, 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 in Central California, in an uncrowded area mm -hmm. of uh, Santa uh, Grover Beach and uh, yeah. my Pismo Beach there. And the Pacific Ocean is just uh, uh, beautifully uh, spread out before me. Mm -hmm. And I, I just all of a sudden realize I'm getting a download. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. Uh, I have a real affinity with the, the water, so I, d I don't know where it came from. Yeah. I just know that it came. Yeah. And so I am fortunate I had a piece of paper and pencil with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over and sat down, and all of a sudden, came, there's the code. Wow. I just wrote it as fast as I could. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it, the, the trick is to be um, alert to when you're starting to get information, because uh, um, when, when, we, when we have a thought, or we let so many thoughts pass by, and think, oh, they're not important, or they're not, uh, they really don't uh, uh, have an, uh, an effect on us. But everything we're thinking is, is like a message. Mm -hmm. And if we really, and some messages we want, some messages we don't, obviously. <laughs> but uh, uh, we, when we have a message that we want, we want to make sure that we 
uh, do our best to to remember it. So I write them down and, yeah. and not only remember it, but to pass it along to our fellow travelers so that they can uh, uh, glean something from it and uh, have their lives get better as a result of it. So yeah. a whole lot of it's just being alert. And uh, nowadays, uh, and I'll tell you, and there's the other side of it too. If I... Uh, if I'm going along down the street and I stub my toe or cut my hand or, or you know, uh, or uh, trip or have a challenge of some sort, I've learned to uh, look back and think of what the thought I was having right immediately before I stubbed my toe. You were okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, usually that, uh, if I'm at, uh, it will happen that I was having a thought that I wouldn't let in the in a jillion years. Yeah. before I did that. And the stubbing of the toe was just my, my guides getting my attention to, uh, don't be late for that point, Tony. Yeah. You know, don't, <laughs> don't follow that one through. because, uh, and, and that's the way it does seem to work uh, on a synchronistic level in our lives. Uh, the more we stay up to the little challenge we have or the little uh, incidents that uh, this toe stubbing and, the, uh, and so forth, why uh, uh, the more we can keep it from happening again by just staying, going back and realizing what it is we were thinking about and then turn that thought around and yes. uh, find the positive uh, experience that we're really looking to have. Yeah, it's almost like a little bit of a, a warning that check in where you are right now and mm-hmm. and be aware. And yeah, it's nice that, the, that uh, we get those signals and those signs and that communication. Exactly, and, and, and again, in my very first book, I think I said something to the effect that the time is coming when we will have a thought, and it will be there. Mm. So these times we're living right now, they're just, mm-hmm. uh, we've still got a little buffer zone, thank God, because we need it. Because <laughs> uh, I don't know about you, but i got thoughts running through my head sometimes that really don't want to be manifesting. Yes, and uh, these are little wake-up calls uh, and preparation for the time when... Uh, We'll have a thought and it will manifest instantaneously for us because those days are coming. And, and that's what this is all about. Mm-hmm. That's what living in 3D is about is preparing us for those times so that we can uh, be, uh, be more alert mm-hmm. you know, to what we're creating. Yeah. And um, what do you see for uh, humanity? Do you, do you think that we're in a time right now of, of a transition period and and what is your vision for the world um like in the in the near future i guess like how how fast do you feel like all of this is growing because i it's funny how i have friends who you know we don't talk about we hadn't in the past i've known one one lady for 10 years and we really didn't talk about law of attraction or intending it just what wasn't something that we, I felt we shared in common, and she actually started talking about manifesting and intending. And I feel like, uh, you know, and again, I think when you attract like, attracts like, and so that makes sense to me now that I'm saying it. But I feel like it's getting more general knowledge, and uh, we are becoming more aware of it. I agree. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. This is the information that we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. Uh, making its way into the mainstream mm-hmm. and uh, uh, as far as a timing thing goes uh, i have no mm-hmm. idea and i don't know one channel on this planet or mm-hmm. one inspirational person who mm-hmm. does right. you know the, mm-hmm. the, the uh the my experience has been that the people who are uh inspiring people you know, who are the light workers and the writers and the mm-hmm. authors and the channels and messengers and so forth mm-hmm. that they they really are don't know timing mm-hmm. uh, that uh, that they really cannot tell you that something's going to happen at a certain time. Right. And that's because uh, they're in the now, yes. and and that's where we want to be. If you just stay in the now, you don't have to be so concerned about the, uh, mm-hmm. the future yeah. and what's going to happen. Uh, the trick mm-hmm. is just to stay in the now. That that that'll keep us busy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, I I have a question that I I meant to ask you about the circle and I'm just I'm so 
curious about, or actually you, you've explained it so well, but I, I kind of want to share that with the audience about, um, you mentioned about the power of a circle. And, you know, when you met uh, for the intenders circle, and we call the, uh, uh, the cyber circle, the online circle, and I've thought this so many times in my life about, uh, you know, sometimes you'll go to an event, or if it's at a uh, group, and you have somebody on stage, you know, that's speaking, and then, you know, and sometimes that's n necessary just because uh, it, you know, facilitates learning and that type of thing. But just how you talk about the, it, the circle was actually intentional, and so that you, the gathering of people and the history behind that of having a group in a circle and connected in that way and the power in that. Yeah, of course, and the, the ancients knew it, and the, uh, the ancestors knew it, and the Native Americans knew it, and the Aborigines knew it. It's just that we in America don't, don't know it because we've got, our, our egos have taken over, and people want to get up in front of the crowd and from the pulpit or the podium, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's okay for certain experiences, but if you want to create oneness in a group, Mm -hmm. If you want to actually have the, 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 the experience of everybody coming together as one, why the uh, pulpit and the podium arrangements don't work. Mm -hmm. They don't give it to like the, uh, the circle does. A circle is the symbol for manifestation. It's a, it's a symbol for coming together. Yeah. And uh, especially in our intender circles, the real life ones, we, we don't... Uh, we always set the stage for oneness to occur, because oneness is the spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. You heard the anywhere two or more are gathered. Yes. That, that's what it's all about. That's uh, that creates oneness. Uh, I know they've uh, um, sabotaged the word in, in uh, some of the religious teachings. You hear the word atonement, which is really the word at one mm -hmm. but uh, they turned it into something that doesn't serve us at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, uh, it, they turned it around, uh, mm -hmm. taking something really beautiful, mm -hmm. and uh, figured out some way to confuse people with it. So mm -hmm. um, the uh, the at one month is what we're looking for. And anytime I'm in a group of people that are uh, um, looking to have spiritual experience, mm -hmm. well, we want to set the stage for that to happen. And the best way to set the stage for that to happen is to be in a circle mm -hmm. and hold hands. Because holding hands is a, if you can do it, uh, mm -hmm. is a, uh, can, connects a circuit. It's like an electrical circuit. We all, I'm in uh, Pagosa Springs, Colorado, but we all know that in our intender circle, we, we wouldn't do it. Um, think of having an intender circle without ending it with uh, uh, a oneness exercise of some sort. And the way we do it is we tone. We just pick any sound. Ah, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. and we all make that sound together, standing and holding hands uh, in a circle, and you cannot help but have one that's doing that. Right. It's just, uh, unless you've got uh, somebody who's really trying to sabotage the group, or, mm -hmm. or some people that are uh, not involved with the highest good, mm -hmm. uh, um, it, uh, sometimes it uh, affects it, but um, nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll have a feeling a feeling of oneness, and, it, and it's not a thought thing. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling that overtakes the, the physical uh, arena there, the physical body, and all the um, all the people in the circle, and uh, and it feels good. This oneness thing. So we always, <laughs> I'm, I'm being a little silly about this, but it's, it, we always set the stage for oneness to occur in our groups. And, and I know I've traveled across this country and been spoken in so many churches and community groups and so forth so many for so many years and most times those people in those churches they're not setting the stage for oneness to occur they're not setting the stage for mm -hmm. uh, for a spiritual experience to occur because there's just so much ego going on yeah. within the administration of the church itself you don't want to let go of that ego stuff but what people are finding out nowadays is uh, that really it's uh, that oneness is so far uh, better uh, to experience than the ego that, that uh, we're turning to that and, and setting the stage for it to happen nowadays. Yeah, I love that. It's making sense? Oh, it makes so much sense. And I, I'm, 
you know, the, especially when you say the toning, uh, it, it just overrides any thought. It's just, it, it's just an automatic connection and that feels like it just resonates in my chest on a such a deep level that it just, you know, it's like almost going into an instant uh, you know, meditative state when, with that. And when you have more than one person participating, like you said, it just, it can't mm-hmm. help but, but uh, have that feeling of oneness. It's, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. And we, we've done it, you know, in our, on our online circle and, uh, and it, it, we can, it's a little bit more challenging when you're not together, but we've, we've definitely uh, done it and got, got the benefits out of it with them um, even mm-hmm. doing it online. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I have a, the story about Rusty and I, I uh, the dog, and I, I just, I happened across it, and I just, I love that story about um, the dog Rusty, so I was wondering if you could just tell the audience a little bit about that story. Sure, it's been a lot of years since I told that story, actually, so it does, but it, but, uh, and it happened just down the street from where I, where I live right now. Uh, I was taking a walk, as I do, um, in, uh, here in Pagosa Springs, and there's a lake about oh, 10 minutes away. And I'm uh, walking around the lake, and I'm the, coming around the backside of the lake. There are three houses, and one of the houses has a, a, a dog that's uh, chained in the yard. Now, this was years ago. The dog isn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, and it's, uh, it's a... Uh, part chow, part collie, and he's chained to a, uh, a, a, a small doghouse out in the middle of the yard. And, um, rain or sun or three feet of snow, the dog is always there year-round. And the only time he really gets uh, uh, excited or gets uh, uh, spirited is when the, the owner comes out in the evening and uh, feeds him. And he runs to the length of the chain and uh, uh, gets excited and for the bowl of food and a few pats on the head and the owner goes back in the house and that's the, that's sort of what's going on uh, with the dog and I, I call him Rusty I, I don't uh, I don't know his real name mm-hmm. but uh, uh, so and over the years of uh, taking this walk and uh, I'd always uh, stop and, and have to be friendly with the dog and give him a pat on the head or I'll take him a treat or something like that and when the owner's uh, because the owners were going to work all day while the dog's out in the yard. And over the years, you could see that initially the dog was full of spunk and spark and spirit and, and uh, uh, prancing around. But after several years of being on a chain out there in the yard, why, uh, the, the dog just sort of laid there. And, uh, you know, with those sad eyes that uh, the dogs can uh, uh, have. And, and so one day, I'm taking my walk. And it's evening time. It's, I remember it was March, and there was still some snow on the ground. And, it, and the dog was out there in, in the yard at the usual time. And, I, and um, I, see the, I see the owner come out with a, a bowl of food. And the dog's ears perked up, and he runs out to the length of the chain. And uh, yanked on the chain, and the chain broke. Mm-hmm. And uh, the dog is... Uh, Immediately ran away over to a grove of aspen trees and was pacing back and forth, thinking. You could see the dog uh, thinking, <laughs> "Do I want to go back there and get that food, or do I want to make a break for it?" <laughs> and I gotta tell you, because uh, I spent so much of my life just uh, uh, um, in, a, in a state of freedom that I'm rooting for the dog. I'm just. Uh, I'm saying, go for it, Rusty. Take your chances out there in the world. Anything's better. Yes. Anything's better than spending life at the end of a chain. Yes. And so, um, the, uh, the owner uh, is calling for the dog and calling for the dog, and that's not working, and the dog is inching away for it for the dog again and uh, a few minutes later the owner goes back in the house comes back out with this bag of treats oh. sir, and mm-hmm. holds it high over his head and calls mm-hmm. the dog and shakes the treats oh, I can't hear mm-hmm. the treats shake I'm just watching this from mm-hmm. over on the edge of the lake and, uh, and long story short by uh, another uh, five minutes and the dog is back on the 
chain. Yeah, yeah, the treats did it. Yeah, yeah, the treats, the treats did it. Yeah, and so um, I'm taking my walk the next day, and it's uh, more in the mid middle of the afternoon, and no owners there or anything, and so uh, um, I walk up to the dog, and the first thing I notice is that it's, it's a different chain. Mm. This particular chain, the links are thicker, they're bigger, they're stronger. Mm. The chain itself is shorter than the other one. Mm. And so, um, and the dog is just laying there with it, uh, looking up, uh, with the, they're getting those sad eyes. Mm. And, and I boy, walked up to him and uh, just do what I do with all the animals, just telepathically. Hi, mm. how you doing? Mm. What's going on? You know? <laughs> and, uh, and I, I asked, uh, I just sort of asked him, I said, uh, hey, Rusty, I said, what's going on here? I said, how come you keep falling for those same old treats, those same old tricks uh, again, uh, over and over? And, uh, and the dog uh, looks up at me, and he could see a, a glow in his eyes. And telepathically, this message is shot into my mind. And the dog tells me, this. he says, Tony, how about if you unclip this chain from around my neck, <laughs> and we'll see if I fall for those same old tricks again. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's like maybe I learned so, from that experience. <laughs> well, it's, it's so it's so uh, um, analogous to what it is that we are, as humans are going through. Mm -hmm. We we can have all the freedom we want, but we just don't take it because we like the treats. Yeah. But once we stop uh, uh, holding on to our need to have all the the treats or to, to get the treats uh, uh, to get to a point where we aren't attached to them. Yes. In other words, there's nothing wrong with enjoying life and having all the, the uh, friends and the possessions and the family and the mm -hmm. loved ones and the, mm -hmm. and the tools and the toys and all the things that, and the pets and all the things that we long for as long as we don't allow our attachment to those things keep us uh, one minute away from our joy. Yes. So, so yes. uh, it's time for us to have a second look at uh, some of these things that are keeping us from our freedom and our joy uh, and to uh, understand that we, you don't really have to give everything up, but you do have to be willing to. And you say, I, I have it, actually I wrote all this down, you say, uh, from the time that we are were small children, We've been taught to be like everybody else, and we're told that it's respectful of others to practice certain courtesies, and that's fine, as long as we don't become slaves to what other people think or say about us. That's so powerful. Taken too far, our conformity keeps us living in a subtle but very real state of fear. We come, become afraid of acting differently than everyone else around us, even when our heart is telling us to do something one way, our social consciousness screams out to do it another way, lest we draw too much attention to ourselves. And all too often our fear wins out, so break the mold. You must do things not as others do, but as your heart bids you to do. So beautiful. <laughs> Did I write that? Yes. <laughs> so beautiful. And it's so in line with oh, just what I've... <laughs> so thankful that you're a willing participant in it. <laughs> it is such an inspiration and uh, just so in line with where, where I am right now. I just um, just appreciate that and facilitating, you know, this, the friendships that I've had over the last, oh gosh, has it been over a year that we started the Intender Circle and um, just all, all of the ripple effect from that. And, and just your books and and um, your spirit and your your just genuineness and just very very appreciative of you being here and and uh, sharing yourself with me and with the audience and now if someone would like to get information I'd like to just let them know I know um, intenders of the highest good. Uh, dot com, Tony, or what is the best way for information, w especially w on your w book, books? Yes. Uh -huh. 
Getting those messages, I highly recommend um, the the bridge messages or the alignment project, or you know, just getting those uh, daily messages and emails. And I know you're on Facebook too, Tony. But the just the power in being fed those um, uplifting and uh, being able to uh, align with collective energy that's a, a, for the highest good and the power on a daily basis. So I just, I so recommend having, getting that information and getting, getting those emails. Yeah. So, well, Tony, thank you again for taking the time. It's, it's just great to talk to you. I, I feel like I, maybe we'll do this another kind of time and not soon and not record it. <laughs> it's just great to have a conversation with you and, to have you share your information with the audience and uh, I just wish you uh, all the best and, and uh, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on the show here, Brian. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care. You too. Okay. Bye-bye, Tony.